Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today for another presentation as part of the Gray Learning Live webinar series, today focused on great photo accessories. Yes, of course, photographers love their gear, don't they? And I thought especially with the holidays approaching, I still can't believe that this year has gone by so quickly, but with the holidays approaching, maybe you might be thinking about some photo gear that you can get yourself as a gift and or that you want to ask others to get for you. And so I reached out to my buddies at Hunt's Photo and Video, and Noah helped me out with some accessories. I basically hit him up for, give me some ideas of products I might not have ever heard before, heard about before. And he did a great job, sent me some really cool gear that I got a chance to test out. And so I wanted to share some of those items with you here today. I do want to mention, for those of you who are not familiar, my name is Tim Gray, of course. I imagine many of you are already familiar with me. Maybe you're getting my Ask Tim Gray email newsletter, for example, which I've been publishing now for 20 years. I still find that hard to believe that I've been answering questions via email for more than 20 years now. And it, believe it or not, when I first started the email newsletter, I actually thought there would come a time when I would have answered all of the questions that there were to ask. That's an absurd notion, I know. But to commemorate that little uh, adventure of 20 years, two decades of publishing the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter, I also published an ebook, which you can get for free if you want, or you can support the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter by paying full price or half price. All of the details, including the coupon codes, are found at that page shown on the screen here, timgray.me slash atgbook. And before I dive into the great gear, I do want to thank Hunt's Photo and Video for sponsoring today's presentation. They've actually put together some show specials. So if you point your web browser at timgray.me slash hunts, just as you see it on the screen there, that will redirect you to a page on the Gray Learning website where there are some specials. But I do want to give Noah of Hunt's an opportunity to give you some of those details. So I'm going to bring Noah online here. Noah, how are you doing today? Great, Tim. Yeah, thanks for having me mm -hmm. on. Uh, really excited to do this with you. Um, a lot of exciting gear that you're going to be talking about today that we got sent out your way um, with some great promotions worked up for everybody watching now uh, and also watching this after the fact. If you're not tuning in live, a uh, great time to look for getting some stuff for the holidays for your fellow photographer, friends and family, or even yourself. If you're looking to pick up some new gear equipment for yourself, uh, some really exciting products that you're going to be discussing today. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, just want to do a quick introduction to myself. Um, if any of you are not familiar with Hunts, we are a photo and video retail company based out of New England. We actually have eight retail stores throughout New England. Uh, I've been with them now for just over five years, uh, started off in retail sales. Now I'm doing a lot of outside sales and um, trade shows and marketing. Uh, also traveling, doing a lot of events. Um, actually just got back from uh, Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we'll be going out to California first half of next year. Uh, so a lot of exciting things coming up with events and trade shows and conferences. So uh, I work with customers all over the entire country. Uh, if there's ever any questions that you have, uh, any inquiries about gear or equipment, uh, my email, my contact from information is over on that landing page as well, along with all of those great specials. So reach out to me anytime you need anything. Email is always the best way to get in touch with me. Uh, I am more than happy to help out in any way that I can. Uh, even if you just have a question about your own camera or your lens or any of the equipment that you're using uh, that maybe is stumping you a little bit, I'm happy to assist in any way that I can. So I just want to thank you again, Tim, uh, for putting this all together, uh, inviting me to come on and say a few words and uh, allowing us to work up some specials for all of your followers. A uh, great opportunity to take uh, take advantage of some of these amazing promotions uh, and get some stuff ready for the Agreed. holidays. And, and thanks again, Noah. And I do want to add, Noah is especially knowledgeable when it comes to mirrorless cameras. So if, like me, you haven't made the switch yet and you're trying to figure out what to do, or <laughs> if you're just in the market for a new mirrorless camera, that's a topic that he knows particularly well, all photo gear in general, of course, but uh, I do find he's especially knowledgeable on the mirrorless front. So thanks again, Noah, for joining me today and for working up those specials yeah. for Thank our viewers. Thank you, Tim. All right, so let's move on then to the topic at hand, the actual accessories that we're gonna be talking about, The the cool items. Some of these I've not heard of before, a little bit of a surprise to me, and really helpful tools. So I want to walk you through some of those. First and foremost, though, an accessory that you don't have to go to a camera store to pick up, you probably already have, I'll bet, and that is 
a smartphone. A smartphone has become an invaluable tool in photography, I would say. I imagine many of you are already using a smartphone as a camera. I think of a smartphone really as a cool camera that has some additional features, including being able to make phone calls. But there are a variety of features you can take advantage of beyond the cameras. I, I tend personally to use a smartphone just as a secondary camera for more casual snapshots and those sorts of things. I'll use my quote-unquote real camera when I've got a nice scene in front of me that I want to make the most of. But I use a smartphone, especially in photography, for planning purposes. And so one of my favorite apps, some of you are already familiar with the video training course I produced on the PhotoPills app. And this is an app that enables you to do a lot of planning as it relates to your photography. You can calculate exposure values. You can calculate depth of field. My favorite feature in PhotoPills, though, is the planner. And so this is just a brief little video to give you a sense of what that looks like here. This is taken from the video course that is linked there at the top right corner, timgray.me slash pills. And this was part of planning for a full moon rising over the heart of Rome in Italy and trying to figure out where could I position myself in order to frame up an interesting scene. You might see on the map here toward the top center of the map the Altara della Patria in Rome, a popular monument, and that I wanted to have in the frame with the full moon rising. The blue line there indicates the direction to look for the moon at the time of moonrise, and so a really powerful tool, photo pills, which involves a smartphone. Both iOS and Android, by the way, support the PhotoPills app. And again, that video course, if you're interested in learning more, that's available in the Gray Learning Library. But let's move on to some of the other gear that you might not have yet, and that I was not, most of these items I wasn't exactly aware of, or at least the particular item in question in terms of just being available as a piece of gear. And one of the new items that I've discovered is a tablet. Now, tablets aren't new to me. Many of you know that I've been using tablets and recommending them for a number of years. But there's a new company in the world of tablets called Sense Labs, and they've got a nice product. I had the opportunity to take a look at their, in this case, the medium bundle. They have several sizes, and you can get just the tablet if you're looking for a more basic solution or the bundle, which I'll give you some more details about here momentarily. And you can, by the way, from Hunts, get a discount. I believe it's a 10% discount, but just check out that page that I linked to at the beginning. I'll bring that up at the end of today's presentation as well. So you can get a discount on the tablets from Sense Labs. And the idea, the way I typically describe the benefit of a tablet is to imagine signing your name, signing your autograph, as it were, with a mouse rather than a pen. A tablet gives you the ability to use a pen as an input device. So I'll play a little short video here that just gives you an overview. I'm using a pen on the tablet itself to draw. So this is useful, especially I would say in Photoshop, where we might be tracing to define a selection, or we might be dodging and burning by painting in various areas of the image, or possibly using that painting, those paint strokes, to modify a layer mask for a targeted adjustment. That same capability is possible within Lightroom Classic. You may have watched my video lesson on the new masking features, targeted adjustments in Lightroom Classic version 11, where we still have, of course, the adjustment brush. You could use a pen for that input as well. So it just gives you much more fine, granular control over the brush strokes, the painting that you might be doing. And the thing that I love about this bundle, you'll notice it has a tablet with a pen. Notice the accessory bundle here up at the top where we've got actually two pen sizes and some additional points or nibs for the pen, some additional tools there. There's also the button remote control, and I'll give you a close-up look at that here momentarily. First, a close-up look, just to remind you, give you a sense of that granular control where we can paint on our layer mask or dodge and burn with much more efficiency and much more precision, more importantly, when we need to be very careful about our adjustments, be very focused on specific areas of an image, for example. And so that precision can be tremendously helpful. And the remote control, the button remote control, that is also really helpful. It's a great accessory. This is an optional accessory. It's included in the bundle, but you can get the tablet standalone without this. But I love this just for the dial itself. So first off, there are multiple modes, and we can custom define those. So notice here on the screen at the moment, we have a shortcut button for the undo and redo commands, for holding the shift command or option keys. That would be the 
control and alt keys on Windows. And so instead of going to my keyboard, I can be working directly on the tablet with one hand on this remote control, another hand with my pen on the tablet itself, and then as needed, when I need to alt or option click, for example, to sample with the brush, I can just push the button here. The dial over on the right side, though, I think is especially helpful. It can be used for a variety of tasks, again, programmable, so that you can use it for zooming in or out on the image, or my favorite, to adjust the brush size. So playing a little video here, you can push the button on that scroll wheel to switch between the various modes, and then again, press or press and hold the button as applicable, and you can see here, dialing. So in this case, set to size, so I can rotate that dial clockwise to increase the size of my brush, or rotate it counterclockwise to reduce the size of the brush. And again, with this bundle then, I've got so much control without having to use the keyboard and mouse. And some of you know, I'm sure, I've talked about being very much a keyboard and mouse person. I'm not very good on a touchpad, and I really prefer to have a real keyboard. If I'm gonna write an email, I'm gonna go to my laptop and use the keyboard, not try to send it on my smartphone, because there, well, I'm quite literally all thumbs when it comes to typing on a smartphone. I prefer a keyboard and mouse as a general rule for operating my computer. But when it comes to more detailed tasks in Lightroom or Photoshop or other software, then I really find that tablet to be invaluable. So I do highly recommend the Sense Labs tablets, having had a chance to, to play around. Yes, because it doesn't feel like work when you've got these cool tools to work with. But play around with this device and see that the quality is exceptional, the accuracy is really great. And so it is an item that's now a fixture in my digital darkroom and certainly that I would recommend. I see, by the way, there's a question about the presentation being recorded. Yes, if you've attended my previous webinars as part of the Gray Learning Live series, you know that we do always record these presentations and they will be available. The recording will be available on my YouTube uh, channel. That's Tim Gray TV on YouTube and more details on that. Of course, we will send a follow-up email to those of you who registered in advance as well. Moving on to a little more in the field, you might say, accessory. And I know many of you know that I tend to travel under normal circumstances, at least. I travel rather extensively for my photography. And so I have great opportunities to visit a lot of locations. That also means that I have the challenge of traveling since that is involved in so much of my photography and trying to pack just the right gear. And so I found that uh, the tripod creates a particular challenge. It's not always really convenient to travel with a big tripod, a uh, relatively large tripod in any event. And so I'm always eager to learn about tripods that are a little bit more friendly for traveling. And so uh, actually, I, I should have learned how to pronounce the, this company name properly. Siru, I think it is, but uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But this is a really cool mini travel tripod. And obviously, it's small. So it's not designed for your digital SLR with a 600 millimeter lens on it. But it really obviously, as you can see here, can be used to support a digital SLR, at least with a moderate sized lens. Obviously, any mirrorless camera, this would work out great for or smaller cameras. And just a very light package and yet really well constructed and very flexible. So I'll play a quick little video here that shows you the overall adjustability. So you can see there's a small ball head there. There's also, you might notice, the other knob there on the left-hand side that we can use for adjusting the rotation of the tripod of the ball head itself. And so we've got great flexibility in terms of being able to position, just as you would with uh, any tripod that you're using, any ball head that you're using on a tripod, but here in a very compact package. Notice the cutout notch so that we can get the camera tilted at a much more low angle, pointed downward toward the ground, for example, if needed. So very good flexibility and great support as well. And notice that in this case, I have the legs spread out so that we've got a very low profile. But if I need to get my camera up just a little bit higher, those legs do adjust and there's rubber feet essentially on those legs so that we've got good support even when going higher. Now, in fact, when I created the next video that I'm gonna show you, I noticed that I had a little bit of a wobble moment there and I thought maybe I should reshoot the video and take out the wobble, but I thought better to include it so that you see that you do, if you're going taller, need to be a little more careful, but it can be done as long as you're cautious about the camera. So playing that video here, you'll see that there's a little bit of a wobble where 
I, good thing I kept the handle on the camera. There we were. <laughs> checked to make sure that I had the legs positioned appropriately where I would have good support. Obviously, with a longer lens, this is going to be a little bit less possible. But really, especially for mirrorless cameras or for digital SLR with a relatively short lens, this works out great. And more to the point, this is a perfect tripod for those situations where you really need to travel light and be a little bit more nimble as you're moving around. Very often, I will use a very slimline backpack when I'm out on the go traveling because I don't want to be weighed down with a lot of gear. Obviously, sometimes if you're going out and doing bird photography, you're going to be weighed down with gear. But for other types of photography where we don't need those you know, big heavy lenses, then we can take advantage of some of the accessories that make it a bit easier to travel light and still take advantage of a tripod. Many of you know I have a tendency of not using a tripod just because it tends to kind of get in my way a little bit, even though I know it's always better to use a tripod. But when I can get away with it, it's great to shoot handheld. But if I want to travel light, I can still have the support with a little mini tripod such as this one. This next item I'm especially finding interesting to me as I've gotten a little bit older. I mentioned that I've been publishing the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter for over 20 years now. I've aged during that time, and so along the way, you know, my, my knees aren't as uh, nimble as they used to be. And so I learned about this product, the Minimax Folding Stool, and I was intrigued. I hadn't held it in my hands yet when it was described to me by Noah, and I... It, it sounded very interesting, but it almost sounded too good to be true. You know, could I really have a very portable stool that would make it easier to photograph out in the field, to be able to sit out in the field, and still, you know, not feel like I'm weighed down? I've got that small little tripod. Do I really want to have a, you know, a big heavy stool? And the fact that this is a collapsible stool really, I think, makes it a great accessory. So especially if you have a tendency to be shooting down low in the field somewhat often. So things like flower photography, where you're often going to need to get kind of down low to the ground, but you don't want to necessarily have to kneel down and then have to get up because that can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge. Especially I find, you know, if you're squatting down low for an extended period of time, it gets especially difficult. And so the beauty of this Try with this uh, folding stool. It, not only is it, of course, collapsible, you can see here a pretty small size, it's also then expandable so that we can have a useful stool, but it can be sized to varying heights. And so as I play this first video, notice you'll see that it, it sort of stutters, you might say. So I open it up a little bit and stop briefly, open it a little more and stop briefly, and you'll see the segments along the way the stool can be sized essentially to the height that you need. So note this, as I start expanding, there's one height and another height and there's full height. And so with each of those little layers essentially, I can determine exactly how high. And there's just a twisting motion. So you twist, I'll call it counterclockwise, depends on how you're looking at it of course, but you twist counterclockwise and then you can expand and you lock out by twisting back to the clockwise, I think I said counterclockwise first, but in any event, one rotation direction to enable you to expand or collapse and another to lock it, the other direction to lock it out. And uh, really a clever design that works out great. So here a little view out in the field with the stool set up. It's rated to support, by the way, up to 275 pounds. And uh, I'm within that limit, fortunately, and so I'm able to sit very comfortably on the stool and it gives great support in a very compact package. And so, you know, reasonable height setting with adjustable height settings, but then being collapsible. So here's that collapse process for you. And then into it, just a really easy, uh, notice the handle, by the way, for easy holding of that Minimax folding stool. So a really cool accessory. Obviously, I've been familiar with the notion of a stool for sitting on, but I wasn't aware of such a convenient option for being out in the field for photography. So a really cool accessory that you might want to check out. All right, this next one, uh, I'll admit, I thought was a little bit funny at first, and then I realized how helpful this can be. And I've been in many situations where we don't have a whole lot of light available. You know, out before sunrise, waiting for the sun to come up, waiting for some beautiful color in the sky, and you can't really see your camera all that well. It's just pitch black, like what you see on the screen here. And so a headlamp can be a great solution. Obviously, many cameras have built-in light sources, but that doesn't always illuminate the entirety of the camera, so you can't get to all the buttons and knobs quite as easily. And as much as I do suggest to photographers that they get, should get so familiar with their camera that they can find every button and knob very easily, 
that's sometimes easier said than done. And when you're out in the field, you don't want to have to struggle, uh, be slow trying to find the right button. So if you can have a headlamp, so much the better. And so I'm actually going to show you two products that are pretty cool in this regard. The first is a, a pretty straightforward headlamp. And this you just mount it is basically strapped to your head so that you've got a lamp in the front. And this one, when I show you this video, note that the lamp itself is aimed downward, but you can rotate. So think of the lamp as pointing downward, but you can rotate that lamp so that it's pointed essentially in a slightly different direction, which essentially adjusts the height of the lamp, the light that's illuminating the scene in front of you. And as I play the video and you see the lamp getting turned on and off, note that in addition to white light, it offers a red light option, which helps to preserve your night vision. So when you need the lamp the most, probably best to use the red version so that if you need to look elsewhere in the scene, you're able to see reasonably well. You won't adjust to uh, no, daylight, as it were, when you're out there at nighttime. So I'll play this video, and you can see turning on the lamp, pointed right down at my camera, gives me great visibility, and here's the, the red version of that to help protect your night vision, but great visibility to be able to get to all the controls on the camera. And of course, I can turn it off when it's not in use so that I'm not maybe disturbing those around me or distracting wildlife or whatever the case might be. So a really hand, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but using LED light sources so the batteries last a really long time. It does use a standard CR2032 batteries I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And again, that white versus red light with the ability to adjust the angle essentially at which the lamp is pointed. But generally, you know, if your camera's down below, you probably want the light pointed a little bit downward right in front of your face so that you can adjust the settings on the camera. But then in talking to Noah at Hunts, he told me about another product. And now it's a baseball cap and it's got the Hunts logo on it. So you can show off your affiliation with Hunts photo and video if you'd like as well. But more importantly, it's got some really cool lighting options. And so the, the LED hat, again, a baseball cap with lights built into it. So essentially another version of a headlamp but one that's pretty cool. And so you're gonna notice as I play the video here that from the brim of the hat, we have some light sources and there's essentially three, well, three general lighting options. There's a fourth, which is a combination, but we can have white or red as we saw with the previous lamp. And one of the cool things about this LED hat is that we can have lights that essentially point a little bit downward. So for illuminating the camera, or we can have lights that point outward so that whatever we're looking out at, we can have some illumination on as well. So I'll play the video here and we can cycle through. So here's the red side of the cap. The buttons, by the way, are just in the bill of the cap. And so I'll turn off red and turn on the white. This is the downward pointing lights, then the forward headlights as it were. And here's the combination to have both the downward and the forward lights. So as I turn my head here in the video, you'll notice the illumination going to the wall next to me as well. And so I can have illumination downward and in front of me with those white lights, which can work out very nicely hiking down a trail and then wanting to stop and be able to adjust your camera settings. So a clever item. In fact, I have another hat here, uh, well, another video here showing the hat. So there's that Hunts logo on the front of it. And you can kind of see the LEDs here and then playing a video. I'll just cycle through quickly here those different options for the white lights versus the red lights that uh, again, help to preserve that night vision. So a clever item for, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're like me, I always feel a little bit silly having a headlamp, you know, like a miner stuck to my forehead here with this baseball cap design. It works out, I think, a little more <laughs> nicely where we're just wearing a cap. It just happens to have some great LED illumination. So very clever design in terms of working in the field under low lighting conditions. And then another, uh, this is a really simple item, uh, tech wraps. And I'll play a video that shows you the concept here, how it works. There's several different sizes. And as the name implies, these are wraps for your technology just to help protect your gear. And so you might use these, for example, to wrap a lens before putting it into your camera bag so that some metal object, you know, a tripod a ball head that's in your camera bag doesn't, for example, scratch the front lens element or just to kind of protect your more delicate gear from you know dings and scratches, giving a little padding to your hard drives, for example, so that those are kept a little bit more safe. And so a really, really simple design and yet clever as well, where we've just got what amounts to a square of cloth 
but then we can easily wrap up, thanks to a little drawstring of sorts, we can wrap up our gear. So here, a video that just demonstrates with the basic point and shoot camera, but where we can just fold up the gear into this tech wrap, which makes it very modular. Essentially, it can support just about any piece of equipment that, of course, is small enough to fit into the appropriate size based on which wrap we're talking about. But a variety of different items can fit in there, and it's flexible. It's not just, you know, for example, a pouch for a specific lens where a larger lens doesn't fit inside. We've got a, a better range of flexibility with an item like this. So a cool thing to have a few of so that you can wrap up your various items and bundle them together in a camera bag, for example, without having to worry so much about that gear. Uh, rubbing up one item against another, especially when you've got multiple lenses packed up in that bag. Or if, if like me, you sometimes use a backpack that has various compartments, but then there's sort of the catch-all compartment for some of your gear. And if there's some delicate items in there, then you might want to use an item like the tech wrap here in order to protect those items. All right, and another item, this one actually was not new to me. There's various versions of this product. The color check checker mini, there's a color checker passport, there's a larger full-size color checker. This is a color chart that enables you to get more accurate color. And I've talked about this item in the past, but it is one that's, I think, worth repeating because in certain situations, it's really important to get accurate color. This particular product, I would say, is most useful when you want to get fully accurate color. What does that mean? Well, it essentially means that you want color as though the object you're photographing was photographed under perfectly white light with no color cast at all. And so in product photography, if I'm trying to show you this guitar, and maybe I'm listing it for sale, and I want you to be able to see what the color really looks like, I want to make sure that I'm getting as accurate a color for my photo as possible. Now, of course, this doesn't apply. Accurate color doesn't apply to all situations. When you're photographing at sunset, are we really looking for accurate color, or do we want really good color? <laughs> so we want it to be reasonably accurate, but we might bump up the saturation and we might shift it toward a little more yellow and a little more red, for example. But with things like product photography, in some cases with portraiture, for example, you might want to have perfectly accurate photography. This also could come into play with things like bird photography, where you want to have an accurate representation of the colors of the bird. And so I'll play a video here where I bring in, just to demonstrate the concept of this color checker, it is, as you can see, a color swatch guide, essentially. It is an item that has a series of color swatches, including some shades of gray. And so what you do is capture a photograph of the scene with that color checker under the exact same lighting conditions as the subject will be illuminated. So here in a studio environment, for example, I'll set up my lights for my subject, for the guitar in this case, and then with everything set up the way I intend to photograph it, I will first capture a sample image with that color checker in the frame and with the color checker being illuminated by the exact same light that's going to illuminate my subject. So basically that just means putting the color checker right in front of your subject. Capture that test shot that includes the color checker and then continue capturing photos of your subject, capturing a new photo of the color checker anytime the lighting changes. Later, you can use the software from Xrite, who makes the color checker, to process that sample image to generate a profile. And think of this as using a custom white balance setting where you might use a gray card or a white sheet of paper to neutralize the effect of color. Except here, instead of just using a gray card, we're using a series of color swatches. So we're not just neutralizing gray, we're making all of those other colors accurate as well. It's a subtle difference to be sure, but it's a difference that can really make a big impact when color accuracy is critical to your workflow. And so again, for product photography, for some varieties of portrait photography, for photography that involves sort of uh, identification of subjects, so flower photography and bird and wildlife photography, you might find that this is a helpful tool. Again, for those situations where, at least as a starting point, you want to have perfectly accurate color, you can always stray from there with a little bit of poetic license, if you'd like, as well. And then I have one other item, let's see. Ah, how much does the stool weigh? That's actually a great question. I'll have to check on the weight of that. I can tell you it's very lightweight, <laughs> but I don't know the exact weight. I would estimate that it's not even a pound, uh, but I don't know the, the exact weight off the top. Oh, actually, 
Renee has tracked that down for me, and I'm wrong. It's three pounds, uh, so you can get those details. And again, the page that I'll link to at the end again that has those various specials, uh, including I see someone who's asking about the cost of the hat, and I don't want to quote uh, what from memory, so I'll have Renee actually in the background double check the cost of the Hunt's LED hat as well, and I can let you know about that. All right, and then one other item that I have here to share, and this actually is something that goes back a little bit and that I, many photographers might feel that is an older item, so to speak, that they don't need anymore because it goes back to the days, by and large, of film photography, and that is a light box. And yet, when I saw this item, I realized, you know, I really could use a light box because I don't have one anymore, and I still have a pretty good number of slides from my earlier days in photography when slide photography was the rule, before digital photography was even possible. And so I do have a lot of slides that I've still not digitized. I've digitized many of them, scanned them, but not all of them. And I have a lot of slides and other transparencies that I might want to go through and make a decision. Is it time to toss some of those because they are by definition, my older photographs from my earlier days in photography. I'd like to think I've gotten a lot better over the years and captured better photographs over the years, but I do still probably want to preserve at least some of those memories. And that job is made so much easier for slides or other transparencies with a light box. And so this is the Kaiser Slimlight Plano light box. There's a series of these at different sizes. This is the large one. So if you get a sense based on the size of the slides, then you get a, an idea of how big this is. There are a couple smaller versions if you prefer as well. But I'll play a video here turning on this light box. And you can see nice illumination, of course, as you would expect if you've done slide photography or if you've reviewed negatives with a light box before, then you're familiar with the concept. That concept is not anything new, but as you'll see in a moment, this particular one is really pretty cool in terms of taking advantage of the latest technology. And so really simple. This You might notice at the top left corner, this is plugged in, but it is rechargeable. And so you can actually operate it without being plugged in. The light is a little bit more dim. It's not quite as bright when you're operating off of battery versus a, an electrical outlet, but still very convenient to be able to work with that light box with great flexibility from virtually anywhere without needing to be plugged in. Just charge up the battery and you're on your way. But one of the great features about this light box is just how thin it is because of course these days most of our illumination comes from LED sources which are very very small they do not consume very much electricity and they do not produce much in the way of heat so the light box stays very cool and now switching to a different video take a look at just how thin so this is the light box sitting on my desk so below the illumination there where you can see the shadow, that's the desk. That's not part of the light box, an extremely thin light box. And when I play this video, the focus will shift and you'll see the slides in the background come into focus and then the, the focus will roll back to the foreground here so you can get a sense relative to those slides just how small, how narrow, how thin this light box really is. And so just a wonderful solution. The old light boxes that were big and clunky, here a nice compact package that is just great. So if you could use a light box for reviewing some of your older slides and transparencies, this is a great option that you might want to take a look at. But there's more to a light box than just being a light box. It essentially is a light source. So I've used a light box like this for supplemental lighting when I just need kind of a little bit of a fill light near a subject that I'm photographing, or Looking at another video here, using it as essentially a backdrop where I want to be able to photograph a subject with a nice clean background, either to put this light box, literally lean it against a wall, for example, or in the video I'm going to show you here, placing the object that you want to photograph right onto the light box and then using that illumination as a supplemental light and essentially as a backdrop. So play this video here. You can see just a little uh, rhinoceros wood carving here brought onto the light box and getting a nice clean white background illuminating from below a little bit, obviously using additional supple supplemental lights in order to illuminate the subject being photographed, but a clever and helpful tool 
another great photo accessory. So one that has multiple purposes, both in the, I guess you could say, traditional darkroom of sorts in terms of reviewing your older slides and transparencies, but also useful in a variety of ways as a supplemental light source as well. And I see, by the way, Renee was kind enough to look up that promotional price on the hat is $31.50. So the LED illumination hat that's got the white lights plus the red lights, both headlights and downward pointing lights for white, just downward on the red. So really clever design for essentially having a headlamp without it looking like you're wearing a headlamp. You're just wearing a nice looking baseball cap, but it's got those built in lights to help you out as well. All right, so those are the new gadgets, the new photo accessories that Noah at Hunts introduced me to. So once again, thank you to Noah for giving me a chance to learn about some of those new products or new variations on products, or at least variations that I wasn't personally familiar with. You can get all of the details, all of the show specials by pointing your web browser here to timgray.me slash hunts. It's got a detailed list of all of the specials being offered, as well as Noah Buchanan's email address. So if you've got something else that you're in the market for, you can reach out to him and he'll work up a custom quote for you. And I also want to remind you about the ebook I wrote, Behind the Answers, which is a look back at, yes, it's Every time I say it, it's still a little bit surprising, but 20 years of publishing my Ask Tim Gray email newsletter. You can get the details about the ebook at timgray.me slash ATG book. The list price is $20. On the page that this link will take you to, there's a coupon code where you can get it at half price, so just $10. Or if you want it for free, that's an option as well. So just be sure to use those coupon codes that are on that page to get the appropriate pricing for you. In the meantime, Thank you very much for joining me today for this presentation as part of the Gray Learning Live webinar series. And by the way, if you're not already learning from me on Gray Learning, the Gray Learning Ultimate Bundle includes all the video training courses, including the brand new content that we've published on Lightroom Classic 11, the monthly Pixology magazine with the November issue also covering Lightroom Classic version 11. All the video training content that I publish in the Gray Learning Library is included in this Gray Learning Ultimate Bundle, and you can get it for just $99 per year. The normal price is $149. You can get all those details at timgray.me slash ultimate live. And so it looks like that was all the questions that we had today. Just double checking here to see if there are any questions. So once again, thank you to Hunts for sponsoring today's presentation, for introducing me to that great gear. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. I'll hope to see you again very soon for another presentation as part of the Gray Learning Live webinar series. Thanks very much.